Hey guys, thank you for clicking. In this video, I will quickly go over the color tab and all the buttons that go around. I've already made videos that include the color tab in it, but I'll try to start like a series that go from the very beginning of the color tab, like if you don't know any of the buttons, and then slowly progress through all the coloring options there. I know it's really hard. I'm learning to be a better color grader myself. So let's go into this journey together. So first off, we have gallery. Here you can find your stills, power grades and timelines located. I have a separate video on stills that you can check out. Then you have LUTs, lookup tables. You don't need to know that, but this is basically a preset. When you hover on top of them, you can check how it will look on your footage. If you like something, you click on this star here and it will be added to favorites, which is this folder right here. And you can find all of your favorites here. Then you have the media pool, which is the same in any tab. Timeline, a zoomed out look on your timeline. You can't make any changes here. This is only a representation of your timeline so you know which clip you're working on. Then you have clips. Now clips is the most common one to use and it's the better one to use to choose between different clips. Good thing to know is that if you double click on the name of the video, you can see some information about the video. Now this number right here, if it's gray, that means that there's no changes made on this particular video. But if we make any changes, it will be colored. And now we know that this clip has had some color correction. If we want to copy a look, one way to do it is to hold command, select the clip that we want to copy it to, and then right click and apply grade. Or if you're using a mouse, just press the middle button. Next to clips, you have notes. Notes you would always want to be open as this is where you will store and have all your notes for all your changes. One thing about notes here is that here you, you can see it says clip. If you hit timeline, these are all the notes that are affecting your whole timeline. And these are all the notes that are affecting just this single clip. So if you wanna apply some basic corrections to the whole timeline, you would open timeline, add your notes, make changes, and every single clip will be affected. Then you have effects. These are all the effects that are available for you in the color tab. If you wanna look for a specific effect, you can hit here on the search and look for blur, for example, and all the blurs will come up. Again, you can add effects to your favorites by clicking on this star and you can find all of your favorites by clicking on these dots and instead of showing all, just your favorites. Lighthouse, this is a zoomed out preview of your entire timeline. So you can compare colors, maybe this green here didn't match this green. You can zoom in your thumbnails so you can have a better view. Then you have image wipe, which you can grab like this and just make comparisons from one scene to the other. You can change the look, maybe go from up and down, from the sides. You have split screen, which is useful. For example, if you go on LUTs and you select all of the LUTs, and if you go on version and say selected LUTs, you will see all the versions that you have selected at the same time. Here you can change timelines, here you can bypass the color effects so if i have made any changes i can switch them on and off from this button here i can stretch this out if i have multiple stuff stretch out we have the viewer like in the edit tab if you're using a different uh, effect and you want to do any changes like the 3d here you would want your effects to be on this has the same logic to it right here in this whole row you have your color grading tools for example the camera row you can add some changes for example the iso the color wheels where you can add in your basic color grades you have the motion effects here you can use the noise reduction the curves for hue versus hue hue versus saturation hue versus luminance and so on 
then the qualifier is really important if you want to make a very specific selections and changes to a very specific color ranges then you have the masks or the way they're called here windows because i come from adobe so i still call them masks then you have the tracker this is actually a very very good tracker here you can track your windows then you have the magic mask which is literally what it says magic I have a separate video on this that you can check you have the blur obviously and then the key which allows you to change the opacity of every individual note and the sizing but I don't use sizing here on the other side you have here keyframes this area right here is where you will make all of your keyframes then you have the scopes rule number one clipping is bad if you go above the last line or below this would mean the video is clipping which means it's losing information if you're using a separate monitor you can pop it out like this and just put it on your other monitor and have the scopes at any time then you have information which is pretty obvious for every individual clip you have all the information that you might need check out my other videos that i've already made on magic masks and the stills and i'll see you in the next one peace